In a sense, there are countless varieties of English, but in another sense, there are two main spheres of linguistic influence on English. One is American, and the other is so-called British English, though to be clear, that really means English English. This distinction will be relevant soon. There are a lot of differences between the dialects of English spoken in London, between those spoken in Washington, D.C., for instance, but very few features that can be recognized along such clear lines, both historical and diplomatic, exist like roticity. Roticity, in English, is the pronunciation of R outside of when it comes just before a vowel, such as when it is at the end of the word or at the beginning before a consonant. For instance, bear, bearing, and start all feature the R in American English. In British English, however, only one of those does, the one before the vowel. This lack of pronunciation of the R is called non-roticity, though really this isn't a lack of pronunciation of R, as it is a pronunciation of something else. In British English, mostly in the South, the R doesn't disappear totally without a trace. If you listen carefully, you'll notice that the length of the vowel actually increases. Bear. Start. You can see the example, though, that the R is pronounced when the suffix is added, meaning that the R actually is in the root word too, in this case bear, but it only manifests itself in certain contexts. This is not unique of allophones in English, but one of the most noticeable differences between American and British Englishes. You might not be surprised to learn that the rhotic way of speaking retained in American and Canadian speech, but not Australian and New Zealand speech, is older. There are some benefits to having it, including intelligibility, such as in spa and spar, or spa, spa. But really, this is mostly down to luck. English people used to use the non rhotic R in very few contexts. But after colonizing the Americas, this was shifted and then imported elsewhere, hence Australia and New Zealand, etc. This isn't to say that Queen Elizabeth I sounded like how Americans sound now, as changes also occurred there too, but she wouldn't sound totally like Queen Elizabeth II. The whole situation is not as simple as this, however, because the development was not sudden, and for the first time being at least continuous. Much of the attention to non-roticity relates, rightly so, to vowels, but it did not originate around vowels, it originated around S. Then, it seems to have affected R in the way that we might expect, after a vowel, sporadically. Evidence suggests that this phenomenon was used in private but not prestigious circumstances for a long time, and that it was started by women. It is a well-known phenomenon that linguistics notes that change is usually carried by women and that women tend to use whatever is more prestigious as an option when speaking. Still, it took about 200 years at least for the non rhotic art to become prestigious in England. Once this happened, many cities in the U.S. followed suit, which is why New York and Boston dialects often have non rhotic R's. However, when radio was introduced in the U.S., it was the rhotic R that became prestigious and then dominant, but the opposite happened in the UK. In fact, it was not even allowed for people to use them in the BBC until the Second World War, and this was only a political move to prevent German interference. Still, the journey does not end there. While this phenomenon explains why there is a discrepancy between the European and American dialects, in broad strokes, and why Australia and New Zealand have non rhotic R, because they were settled later, though only after the transformation happened. However, Australia and New Zealand English have what's called a linking R. This looks like when an R that would normally not be present, such as in bear, becomes present when the word begins with a vowel that follows it, such as in bear attack. Bear attack. This is also true of British English, as you can hear in the example, but Australians are more innovative. Moreover, in the Oceanic countries, they insert R between endings and beginnings with the vowels, respectively. This is like the linking R, but where none previously existed, such as in law and order, or law and order. These innovations are simply to make speaking slightly easier, but it may show a change that could one day clearly distinguish dialects in the way people already think about the difference between America and England. For more on these sorts of trends, and what I happen to think about them, visit the main blog where there's a new post every day, 
or go to the Patreon so that you can get even more posts and help this channel to get even better and grow. I hope that you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.